so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. As we take our Bibles to Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Mother Earth is going bye-bye. The planet that we are standing upon will be burnt up. Will be destroyed by God the Creator. And God will give us a new heavens, a new earth to dwell therein. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. A place called New Jerusalem for those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is far more better than a place called hell prepared for Satan and his angels. There is New Jerusalem or there is hell. There is nothing else. Hell will be turned into the lake of fire that burneth forever because of your rejection of Jesus Christ, the gift of God that gives us eternal life. A place that you will go prepared by God, a mansion on high, if you were to put your faith and your trust in the finished work of the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. For the Bible says the wages of sin is death, and we're all going to die. And yet the Bible speaks about an afterlife. An afterlife of condemnation, of damnation, of torments. If you continue to reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. Or a place called New Jerusalem, heaven, where God will dwell amongst us. Where God will be in our being. As we are before God in a city prepared and made by God. And if you were to think all oh, this earth is hell, this earth goes away, it's dissolved, it's burnt up, the heavens thereof, and God makes a new. And the Bible says, still in Revelation, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There is coming a day that there will be no more tears. There is coming a day, whether heaven or hell, there will be no more tears. Because in hell, the man says, oh, if he could tip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue. And if there were to be tears in hell, you would get relief. But there is no relief in hell, as you're in burning torments forever. And yet, one of the things that God will give you, by Jesus Christ, by the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. One of the things God will give you is He'll give you a new city, a new heaven, a new earth, being with God for all eternity, and He'll wipe away your tears. No more sorrow. Now sorrow to play in Genesis 3 when man rejected what God had to say. Do not
not eat of that fruit. He ate of that fruit and sorrows and tears since Genesis 3. And we have a reversal. Adam and Eve disobeyed the word of God and tears came. In the moment of heaven, those who were believed the word of God, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, there will be no more tears. Tears are wiped away. Tears are gone. Sorrow is gone. Not now, but when we get to eternity, sorrow, our tears are gone. There shall be no more death. Once you die... You'll never die again. Heaven or hell. But once you die, your life is not over. You just don't lay in darkness for all and ever, forever to be ever. When the lights go out, they come on through Jesus Christ. To be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Wherever you lie to take your last breath on this earth, in Jesus Christ you will wake up as a fraction of time that we cannot record with the Lord Jesus Christ forever. And you'll never die. And there will be no more death. And when you get to heaven, with the loved ones that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Before God in a new city. You will never have to say death's goodbye again. Never. My mom who's saved, I'll never have to say goodbye to my mom when we get to heaven. My wife is saved. I don't ever have to say goodbye to my wife in heaven. Or my daughter. They're saved. They will not die again. And in hell. When you wake up in hell. You will never die again. As the Bible describes as being in torment. Tormented. Forever. And you will wish death would come. But you have already died. And you died without Jesus Christ. And you will suffer the consequences of burning in hell. While those that do preach and those that do believe on Jesus Christ are in heaven with no more tears, with no more death. The same thing that you got in hell, but we have eternal joy to be with God our Creator and Savior. See, you can have the good and you can have the bad. It's your choice. But in order to have what God has to offer you after your death, you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before you die. You cannot die and then come back and reset your life. That's not going to happen. Once death comes, that's final. And if you enter off into the gates of hell without Jesus Christ, that is your choice. Because right now you are hearing the gospel. You are hearing God's word through the Bible being preached. And you will be held accountable for what you have here. For every idle word that a man shall speak, he will give an account thereof. And if you choose to reject Jesus Christ... You will wake up in a place called hell for eternity. And for those that do trust Jesus Christ as their Savior, neither shall sorrow nor crying. A saved person, when he gets to heaven and gets to glory, when we get New Jerusalem, there is no crying and there is no more sorrow. There is no bitterness. There is no loss. In hell, there is continuous sorrow. 
But there's no crying. Because your wet tears would relieve the burning. And since you're in a devil's hell burning forever, it just evaporated if there was ever any wetness. And if God's going to wipe away sorrow and tears when we get to New Jerusalem by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, I can only interpret the scriptures that the Holy Spirit, the gifts there are, are love, joy, and peace. So are you willing to trade your sorrows, your tears, for it to believe on Jesus Christ and end up in the eternity of no sorrows and no tears and have joy everlasting in full glory? Because one day your pain reliever is going to relieve, be gone. One day the alcohol will be gone. And that's only a temporal substance. And yet my God is a God of almightiness. My God is a God of holiness. My God is the creator. My God is the offer of salvation that can give you eternal hope, eternal joy, without no more tears, without no more sorrows. And yet my God's a holy God, and he'll throw you into the lake of fire for rejecting what his son has done for you. He suffered and died on that cross, according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And I don't care if you don't want to hear this, this gospel. I don't care if you don't want to hear about Jesus. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. I've got to hear enough of your worldly music trash. It's about time you hear the heavenly songs of Jesus Christ that the mouth proclaims salvation. For you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get the eternal hope, the eternal joy. Isn't that enough to come to God by faith and say, God, I want that. You'd be a fool to say, oh, I'd just rather burn. I'd just rather suffer for all eternity. I'd rather turn away from God than believe Jesus. I would love to party in hell. You're a fool. There is no partying in a fire. You see, you don't have hot dogs and marshmallows roasting in the fire. You're roasting in the fire forever. And that makes your God happy. Satan. Ah, uh, here we go. Neither shall there be... I have to find my page again. Neither shall there be any more pain. Now I'm speaking after we die, after we go to New Jerusalem. By your faith and belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ, God will give you through Jesus Christ a health care program that no man on this earth can give you. The president can't give you such a health care. The health care organizations can't give you such a health care. I'll tell you what God does with his health care. He gives you no more pain, no more sorrow, and he'll give you a brand new body that will not ever, ever break down. Now, oh, come on, you people that are taking, uh, taking prescription medicine. Come on, people who are taking Tylenol. Come on, people, I need Pilfrey. Would you rather bend your knee at Jesus Christ at the hope of getting a brand new body that will never suffer again? Or end up in a place called hell where you burn in torment with no relief at all. You see, doctors, nurses, surgeons will be in heaven. But we will not need their services. Evolution is not in heaven. God has created us and he'll create in us a brand new body. And you may laugh that off, but what is the government, what is the scientist doing for you and your body today? They're milking your budget. They're 
emptying your pockets. There's a drug right now that people need for pain and the government's taking it away from you. And God says, come on to me, all you that are heavy burden. Come on to me and I'll give you rest. I'll give you comfort. I'll give you a brand new body. I'll give you a body that will never have tears, that will never worry, that will never have sorrow, that will never suffer pain if you are come to Jesus Christ and put your faith and trust in Jesus. And look at you idiots are not even making a move to God for that program that God has promised in this Bible. Revelation chapter 21. That's a lot better than going to the doctor, $15 copay here, $20 copay for your prescriptions, and let me get in, let me get the insurance approval for that medication. That's a lot better. No. I'll tell you what's a lot better putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Get in the fruit of the Spirit, which is, ho which is holiness, which is love, joy, peace. You can get the peace in your sufferings today. You can get the joy when you're, you're, you're sorrowful. You can get relief from Jesus Christ. And still go through your worldly troubles and still go through the problems of this world. And then when you pass on, to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. There is no human that can give you anything as such. And yet God makes the promise. Eternal life through Jesus Christ. I don't need it. I just want to say something. As a fellow believer and Christian, Oh, come on. Jesus preached yeah, to listen, multitudes of people. You might just have better success if you keep telling people that how bad they are and just letting them know that God loves them. Because no, people no. people already think they're bad. For God people. so loved. But you're not talking about them. that. You're talking about how bad people are. I'm talking Maybe. about heaven and the rejoicing thing yeah, that God's given us. But you're yelling at people. Just, as a, I'm a Christian. And I'm, I'm a saying, Christian. What do you do for witnessing to people with your love I, and power? I am a witness that God's love. I show that how? to other people. You let your life show? I do. I your, do. Life, your life ain't doing nothing. But I'm saying, if you would just stop, stop telling people how bad they are, and just let them know that God loves them, they, they are. Would be you don't read sinners. the Bible. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. you guys have a wonderful day. You do now. But Thank you for just, speaking ignorance. It, Thank you. Because you don't read the Bible. Jesus spoke to multitudes. Thank Paul you. spoke to have multitudes. And he called them hypocrites. He called them... Vipers. So... Are you a true Bible-believing, born-again Christian by the blood of Jesus Christ, or are you just happiness in the world? Joel Olstein. Joel Olstein. Yes, he did. That's why they crucified him. So let's get back. Let's get back to the hatefulness of no more pain. How hateful is no more pain? Hey, you're yelling, buddy. The hatefulness of no more pain. And God says through Jesus Christ, no more pain. Can you imagine that the Bible speaks about in the book of Joel that we're coming back with Jesus Christ in a battle and that a sword, if it were to pierce us, would be no effect. Now, if you were to stab a sword in me today, ouch, pain, prescription, I need medicine. And yet God's going to give us a body through Jesus Christ. Not the Jesus Christ that woman preaches about, but the Jesus Christ of the Bible, that once we get to heaven, a body of no more suffering, of no more pain, no more tears. Or you can do it your way. You can do it the unholy way. You can do it without Jesus Christ and end up with a body. Which I can't even get into what the Bible says. I don't have the time. But the body that you'll get in hell will be in complete, utter darkness. You will not see your friends. You will be gnashing your teeth in pain. Oh, you'll have teeth in hell. God will give you teeth in hell. And can
Can you imagine having each tooth, a toothache, forever with no relief, never mind the tongue is burning? That was uh, the rich man said. No wonder to the eyes that are so dry without any lubrication and torment. I am offering you a new body with God without any what we suffer today after we die. I'm offering you a body that will suffer and have no relief. Relief comes by your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Your torments come by you believing in anything or not believing at all. For the former things are passed away. Democracy is passed away in heaven. We will not vote anymore in heaven. We will not have the media in heaven. That's passed away. Jesus told Nicodemus, and I'm not going to quote the scripture completely, because I want to stay where I am, but you know, he told Nicodemus in the words of that, I can't even explain to you the things of heaven, because you can't get the earthly right now. After Jesus told him, ye must be born again, and that scratched Nicodemus' head, like, what are you talking about? And when we get to heaven by Jesus Christ, there is so much, there is so great and wonderful and holiness, we can't describe it. And that is by putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. What can be so hateful about trying to tell you what God has offered for you for better? And what Satan can give to you for worse. Ladies and gentlemen, God does not love you if you reject Jesus Christ. That's a lie out of hell. For God so loved his past tense. You don't get the love back until you put your faith and trust in Jesus. And God the Father through Jesus Christ. I mean, when we get to heaven, there's only one way I can describe it of a human term, and it does not even describe heaven, but perfectness. And I can't even get to describe what's going to be. Never departing. Never having to go to a doctor. Not ever having a sneeze. A place where allergies will not affect you. That tree of life will not have pollen to make you sneeze. And yet it produces bugs. I mean bugs. It produces flowers and leaves. For the healing of the Jewish nation. Not the church. That's a whole other problem there. But everything we see on this earth today is going to be past. It's, it's going to be a vague memory to what yet is going to come through Jesus Christ and by Jesus Christ. What would our flesh be without sin? What would our what would our thoughts be without uncleanness? And yet Jesus Christ said, as far as our state today, if a man looketh upon a woman to lust after him in his heart, has already committed adultery. And we will be going to a place by Jesus Christ. All those immoralities, all those wicked, all that is sin, is gone. And never to be found ever again. As I said, the only way I could describe it, and it doesn't describe it enough, is perfectness. When you get to heaven, whatever you think will always be right. 
When you get to heaven, it's always right and never wrong. In heaven, there are no scorners of Jesus Christ. Only those that will worship and honor Jesus Christ. In heaven, everybody will enjoy the message of Jesus Christ. You won't have fools mocking, as the Bible says you will have today. The Bible says that there are fools here that say in their heart, there is no God. The Bible says that there are fools that listen to deceivers that deceive the people and will not hear the word of God. And yet Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall never pass away. You see, when you go to heaven by Jesus Christ, you go to heaven by the word of God and dare the word of God forever bound. Now, if you don't want to hear the preaching of Jesus, don't even think about saying, I'm going to heaven. Because you will not enjoy it. Because in heaven you will hear preaching as loud as you can hear Jesus and the apostles preaching to us and teaching. Don't say, oh, I hate your Jesus that you preach, but I'm going to heaven. I don't enjoy the Jesus you preach about because you turn people away, but I'm going to heaven. Oh, no, you're not. Because the words I preach to you come out of the King James Bible. And heaven and earth will pass away. We read that in 21. But my word shall never pass away. And forever the word of God will be established to those who have believed on Jesus Christ. You see, when we get to heaven by Jesus, and notice I keep saying when we get to heaven by Jesus, by Jesus, and only by Jesus, we will be singing praises to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and that's all. There is no one or anything else to be worshipped in heaven but Jesus. Now, if you don't want Jesus, you don't like Jesus, you don't love Jesus, you're not going to enjoy heaven. That's on it all the time, but the true news is that Jesus saves. The true news, the good news, the gospel is that Jesus suffered and died according to the scripture and was buried and arose again. According to the scripture, the news I give to you comes out of the Bible. The news of the world, who knows where it comes from. Thank you for pointing out that they got fake news and we got the good news. Jesus Christ. You're not going to find this message on television. And this is the message of hope. This is the message about Jesus Christ. This is the message that you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. This is the message without Jesus Christ. You will not get the benefits of heaven. You'll get the benefits of hell. And there's no beneficialness to being in hell. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. A complete newness. No more old former things. You won't hear that music in heaven anymore. You won't have to line up for food in heaven. Your mind and your thoughts will be new. Your body will be new. The place you'll be will be new. Forever new. And unlike an automobile, it's forever new. Not once you drive it out of the showroom, it, it depreciates. Nothing in heaven depreciates. It only gets value more through Jesus Christ. Forever. And forever. And ever. And ever. Thank you. See, I know you're hearing. All things new. So we can't even fathom what God's going to do.
to do through us through Jesus Christ because he says, I'm going to make it all new. There's no way to describe something that's new. Something that's unseen. Again, a word, perfectness. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. Listen. The maiden voyage of the Titanic, a brand new ship that God could not ever sink. And they asked for a little ice. And the ice was brought and put the ship down at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Where there are beautiful animals and fish down at the bottom of the ocean that no man's eyes could see into present technology. The discovery of new animals and new life and how beautiful they are, man is finding today. And all that, the Bible proclaims that the earth and the heavens will dissolve. Daytona Beach will be gone one day. It will not be in heaven. The United States will not be in, in heaven. But there will be newness. There will be that which we have not seen. Again, in perfection. Without sin. Without decay. Without rotting. Without being trash. There is no recycling in New Jerusalem. There is no garbage in New Jerusalem. There is no waste. And perfect holiness. New Jerusalem is spoken about a place of all light. And no darkness. There will be no street lights. There will be no need of the sun. All by Jesus Christ. Forever to be by Jesus Christ. you just got to believe. And I've only read a few verses. If you could go on in Revelation 21 and 22, it gets much better. And all you got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And those things are additional to not going to hell. You put your faith and trust in what Jesus has done and not what you can do. And the promises that God will give you. The promise that God has But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars which burneth with the fire and brimstone which is the second death. You're not washed of your sins. Don't forget to add Trump for liars. If you're not washed of your sins you don't go to heaven. If you have not been to the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, don't lie and say, oh, I'm going to heaven. Because if you say you're going to heaven, and what I just read to you about liars, and you're not going, you are a liar. And you will not be found there. I don't care what your church, I don't care what your parents, I don't care what your tabernacle, whatever you go, I don't care what they say how to get to heaven. If it's not by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a lie. 
and there are no liars in heaven. A man is a liar and a deceiver if he'll make you think you're okay without Jesus Christ. And you and him will not be found in New Jerusalem. I'm sitting down in pain, but one day when this body departs, there's a rapture calls and whether I to die. One day God will give me a new body that will never, ever ache. Will always be standing and kneeling before Jesus. You can have that too. You can have that eternal hope through Jesus Christ. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And there are so much other benefits that the Bible speaks about. And there are so much new benefits which the Bible doesn't even speak about for those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the wages of sin is death. We're going to do that very well. We will die very well. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Well, Can't see what, get off your fat ass and talk. You see what God will do when you guys continue to reject. You'll stand before him when prepare to meet thy God, the Bible says. That's your problem. There's no fear of God today. The fear of God's the beginning of wisdom. The wisdom to know that Jesus saves. I hate to have God say to him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all my days. Because I believed on the Lord. And listen, salvation won't make your living on this earth wonderful and great. But with Jesus through it, with Jesus in the storm, let him take control. But without Jesus Christ, you're heading for a perfect storm of trials and tribulations of damnation of torment because you will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ you want a new body you don't want pain you don't want sorrow you don't want what you got today And you want that ability after you're dead? The prescription is Jesus Christ before you die. Better the words of a preacher than the words of God. Because if you stand before God without the words of the preacher about Jesus Christ and the gospel, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And that's God, Jesus Christ, speaking. No blood of the Lamb, no heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I, uh, I said, like, I, I didn't want to be 
He do it now because you don't know about later. The Bible speaks of his life as a vapor, and it is. There is a way to have peace after death. And that is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ before you die. If you don't die with Jesus, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, you will wake up in hell. And your troubles have only just begun. If you think living on earth for 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years, maybe 100, you think that was problems? Die without Jesus Christ. I advise you not to. I doubt. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Friends, here's a wonderful Christian dentist right here. And I won't need him in heaven. Oh, but he will be in heaven. Nice to see you. Yes, we haven't seen you so long. We were worried about you. Yeah, I was struggling. Yeah. It's heaven or it's hell. There's nothing else. Have a nice day, you too. And the only way to heaven is by Jesus Christ. And today, I, I just tried today to bring you the good side of Jesus Christ on your faith and belief and what you're to get in heaven. It's not hateful. It's a wonderful thing that God has to offer us through Jesus. And it's a great thing to preach it. What is awful is you'll just keep on going and not believing. And there are many cases in the Bible. Many cases. Where the scripture says people talking and even God talking I told you so now I don't know maybe I'm in the flesh forgive me put under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ but I don't know but if you were to stand before God the great white throne judgment and be condemned by God I would hate to have God call me forward and my family stand before you before you're cast off in the lake of fire. I would hate to have my family stand before you people and say, I told you so. For four years we told you so. We stand faithful of preaching the gospel. We stand faithful That my hands are clean of your blood. Multiple times. The love of God is that we preach the gospel. We will give you gospel tracts. We will hold signs. Better the gospel and the scripture on signs and the preaching than a 1-800 number to give money across my belly, like Buddha. Better we preach the gospel and all about Jesus Christ for the opportunity for you to believe on him, for the opportunity for you to call upon the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Then not preach at all and have you go off into hell unknowing. The love of God is going in all the world and preach the gospel. The love of God 
telling me to preach the gospel is they're not all going to believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Put your vote in Jesus as Savior, as God, as your only blessed hope. And He'll never let you down. The promises that Jesus made in the Bible through God are true and honest if you rightly divide. And I read you some of those promises today. And they apply to Christians. If you are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, if, there's no other hope. There is no other way but Jesus. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Power that when you die to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Power to receive a new body. Power never to sorrow, never to cry again. 